This video is about Turing machines with more than one tape, so-called multi-tape Turing machines. The extension to multiple tape Turing machines is actually quite straightforward. Instead of one tape, you have two or more tapes, so it's also possible to have three, four or even more tapes. And uh, each tape has its own uh, read and write head. Each transition reads the current cell on each tape, determines the, uh, the transition that's actually enabled, and uh, updates the um, current cell accordingly. If we look, for example, at this transition here, this transition is enabled uh, if the uh, current cell on the first tape is an A and the current cell on the second tape is a blank, and then this transition will simply keep the A on the first tape and replace the blank on the second tape by an A. And afterwards, uh, the head on the first and on the second tape both move to the right. So what this state, uh, what this transition actually does is it copies all the A's from the first tape to the second tape. And similarly, the second transition does the same for the B's. Here we have a Turing machine, a multi-tape Turing machine for the language WCW. Uh, the important part is that this W here and this W here are actually the same word. Uh, w contains only A's and B's, so this C here in the middle is kind of a separator between these two parts. To actually compare the first part with the second part behind the C, the idea of this Turing machine is that in the first state, Q0, we simply copy all the letters from the first tape to the second tape until we reach um, the letter C. Then in state Q1, we move back on the second tape with the head, keeping the head on the first tape on the same position. Then as soon as we, we are back on the second tape, and then we change to Q2 and simply match the first tape and the second tape. And if they coincide, then we change state to the accepting state. So let's have a look how it works. At first in Q0, we copy from the first to the second tape. Then in Q1, we go back on the second tape then we change state and match in Q2. And finally, we uh, move to the accepting state QF. Now it might be interesting to consider um, how this can be done by a one tape Turing machine. So if you have any free time, feel free to uh, build a Turing machine that accepts the same language, but using only one tape. Probably you will come up with a Turing machine that's much more complicated. So what we see here is that the uh, Turing machine is actually Quite, quite easy to construct. So what, what we gain by the multi-tape Turing machine is uh, to get um, more intuitive Turing machines, small and simpler Turing machines. However, we have to consider the, the question whether multi-tape Turing machines can actually accept more than one tape Turing machine. And it turns out it's not the case, the answer is negative. Every, uh, every multi-tape Turing machine can be simulated by a Turing machine with only one tape. So if we have this um, multi-tape Turing machine here, the, uh, the interesting part to simulate are of, is of course the, the two tapes. So we, we have to find a method to simulate these two tapes on one tape. The first solution we're looking at simply combines the knowledge of the head position and the head posi positions and the current uh, letters into one letter of a new alphabet. So the idea is to actually extend the tape alphabet. Instead of uh, the original alphabet, we simply use four tuples. This uh, extended tape alphabet, so this one here, this whole thing here is actually one letter in one cell from uh, uh, the new tape alphabet. And the idea is that this new tape alphabet contains the indication of the head position and the contents of the, uh, of the two tapes. So we have two head positions and two uh, letters we have, to, we have to take care of. So the first entry is the uh, marking indicating the uh, head position for our two, uh, two uh, tape Turing machine. The second entry is the letter um, on the first tape. Then the third entry is, uh, is marking the uh, position of the second head. And finally, the fourth component represents the letter on the second tape. 
and now we can mimic, we can simulate the uh, behavior of our multi-tape tuning machine with only one tape um, by proceeding as follows. Uh, we assume that before simulating one transition, the head is uh, left of all the head markers. So in this case, we have two head markers, so uh, the uh, head is uh, on the left of all head markers. Then we then move the head to the right until we've seen all the, the head markers. And we remember the, the letters we've seen on each of these virtual tapes. So for this uh, A here, uh, for this uh, um, marking here, we remember the A, for this marking here, we remember the C. And we use this information to determine the transition that the original multi-tape Turing machine would take. So we memorize in the state, on the one hand, uh, the letters that we've read, and on the other hand, we uh, memorize the position of the head relative uh, to, the, to the actual head, so the, the position of the, the head markers relative to the current head position. These two uh, informations we store in the state, so it's a finite number of, uh, of possibilities, so it can be, stayed, uh, can be stored in the state. So after we've determined which transition to take, we go back from the uh, right-hand side to the left, going over all the head markers and update the tape accordingly. And then our head is, uh, is again uh, left of all head markers and then we start all over again. So using this idea we are, we are able to, to simulate the behavior of a multi-tape tuning machine with only one tape. So this, this approach naturally generalizes to more than uh, two tapes, so it works the same for three, four and even more tapes. Instead of fusing the contents of the two tapes and the uh, corresponding head position uh, into, into one letter, there's an alternative approach for simulating the multiple tapes using only one tape. And the idea is that we take all the cells that we visited so far on the second tape and uh, instead of having them on the second tape, we, we simply move them to the first tape, behind the contents on the first tape. Of course, we have to uh, ensure that we separate the contents of the first tape, the original contents of the first tape, from the contents of the second tape. And to this end, we uh, use special separators to uh, separate uh, both tape contents on one tape. We also have to mark the cells um, that would hold the, the, the head in the uh, two-tape case. So in this case, we simply add a bar over each uh, cell uh, content if uh, if the the head of the two tape Turing machine was on this position. This is actually quite similar idea to the first approach. And there's one tricky part that we have to consider, and the tricky part uh, is actually that the uh, head the the head marker might actually move to one of the separators. So if we are, for example, uh, at this position with the with the virtual head, so with the head marker, if we were in this position and if we uh, would move to the right, then we would actually reach the, uh, the separator marker. So uh, in this case, we simply have to make space to the right so that uh, the simulator can continue. And to make space on, on the right, we simply uh, move all the content that's uh, 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 right to the separator, one cell to the right, and then we have space and then we can simply continue. We've seen two approaches to simulate a multi-tape tuning machine using only one tape. So from now on we can freely use multi-tape tuning machines everywhere because we know that in principle we could uh, construct also one tape tuning machine doing the same thing. And in many cases it's much easier to come up with a multi-tape tuning machine instead of a one-tape tuning machine.